Okay, hi, my name is Jeremy Shulman, uh, Network Automaniac on Twitter. And uh, today I'm gonna kind of dig into an XML file that um, was given to you by Eric Network Pistolero. Uh, it's an NSO configuration file. And uh, what I'm gonna do is show you how I kind of dig through a file and pull out some data. Now this is not meant to be like a holistic XML XPath tutorial, but I just wanna show you some of the things that are possible uh, once you start to learn how to use uh, XML and XPath. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is show you the original file. The original file has namespaces in them. Um, generally speaking, uh, I get rid of namespaces because they cause me uh, problems when I try to find data. And, and most of the time you really don't need namespaces. There are some circumstances when you do and they're useful, but we're going to um, uh, get rid of them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, in my console I'm going to use uh, interactive Python and I'm going to use a package called uh, LXML. So I'm going to say from LXML import eTree and then I'm going to try to import the file uh, that uh, Eric gave me. So he gave me a file in this directory and it's called NSO response. Now I happen to know that this is gonna fail, and it does. Um, it has some bad XML in it. This is not uncommon. And so the way that you handle this is you have to basically parse it and tell it to ignore errors. And the way you do that is with the parser argument, and you can say XML parser, and you can say uh, resolve, uh, no, it's recover is true. You can see that it parsed it into an element tree. So I'm gonna just kind of store that as a variable. And now that uh, we've parsed it, the next thing I want to do is get rid of the uh, namespaces. And in order to do that, uh, I have a little function that's in this repo and it's called strip namespace. It's just a few lines long. So I'm just going to run that. I'm going to say from uh, XML help uh, import uh, strip namespace. And then I'm going to say ET is equal to strip namespace ET. All right, now that I've got rid of the uh, namespaces, I am going to save this back and there's a write function to do that. So I'm gonna say, write that back out and I'm just gonna call this with no namespace. Okay, now in the editor here, we'll see what we've got in this new file called no namespace. And I'll make that a little bit bigger and shrink this down a bit. All right, so you can see I got rid of the namespaces. So before, namespaces, after, no namespaces. All right, so let's go work through an example of finding all the gigabit ethernet interfaces that have a primary address assigned. So I've looked through this XML data file and I found something called a primary address. So I can see that there are things with primary addresses. And my editor, which is PyCharm, actually will do breadcrumbs on an XML XPath, which is really handy. So I can see that the, the expression here is devices, device, config, interface, gigabit ethernet, you know, this is a very long path. So what I wanna do is I wanna just find all of the gigabit ethernets that have a primary address uh, on them. So the first thing I can do is I could uh, take my element tree and just do an X path and say, well, you know, what I wanna do is find all my interface that are gig, gigabit ethernet. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using this kind of shorthand notation that says just search through my data. So I don't have to type in, you know, devices, device, config. I'm just saying, you know, shorthand, find all my interfaces that are gigabit ethernet, which would get me to this tag. And it would match all elements that match on that tag. And so usually when this happens, it means I've misspelled something. So let's go into that Enter. Face gigabit Ethernet. What did I do wrong? Let's see here. Uh oh. TX path interface. Okay, interface gigabit Ethernet. All right, okay. So the other thing you gotta know take into consideration is if you spell something wrong in XPath it just returns nothing so here we have these are our gigabit ethernets 
and uh, we can see how many we've got. If I hit enter, we've got 30. But we want only the ones that have primary IP addresses assigned. So the way you can filter is using this bracket notation. So you put the expression in here that you want to filter. And again, what I want to say is I want to find everything that has a primary uh, address. So within this filter, I put an expression that's relative to the node that I'm in. So what I can do is dot basically represents the node that I'm in. And from this node, I want to find something called a primary address. And you can see that I found some. Now it's returning back gigabit ethernet because it's returning back the, the last thing that I've asked for. I've qualified the last thing that I've asked for, but what I've asked for is gigabit ethernet. So if I do a len on this, I can see that there's only 16 of those. Remember, I had 30 of them that did come back as gigabit ethernet, and I have 16 that only have primary addresses. So let's, uh, let's get that, the, that list. So I'm gonna call that IF list. You can see that I have these interfaces. Now, I know from looking at this interface information, if I look at this, um, I can go back and find uh, the interface name. Right? So if I wanted to, I could take you know, the first item in my list and I could say, uh, find me the text of name. Oops, name. So that's one. And if I wanted to find the description text, I could just put in description, right? Just like that. Now, find text is essentially shorthand for uh, find and then the tag name description, for example. That just gives you the element, which has something called text. So find text is really just a shorthand version of that. So I can just say find text description, and that gives me that. All right, so I have this interface list, and really what I want to do is I want to get the, uh, the device name, the interface name, and I want the primary IP address and mask. Okay, so I'll show you a couple of other things. Once you have an element, remember uh, that this is my element, this is my gigabit interface, I know that if I go up the tree, so to speak, I can get to device. And I can see that device has a name associated to it. So just like this, I could say, you know, from this element, I want to go up what is called my ancestor tree. So I can say ancestor, and this is what's called an axis, right? There's many different types of axes where you can navigate. So an ancestor lets you go kind of up through your parents. And I'm gonna go up through my parents looking for something called device. And when I reach that, I want, it, I want its name, right? So if I hit enter here, I can see that I found the name, which is this name. And if I wanted its text value, I could actually do this, give me its text value. And you can see that it's just row zero. Now, XPath will always give you a list, whereas find and find text will not give you a list. That's something important to know. So I could just say uh, zero here. That would be my the name of my device. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you is um, another axis, right? Which is pretty um, pretty easy to use. If I use um, if I go back to my interface, right, and from here I can actually search back down to find uh, my primary address. I don't want the text yet because I just want the element. Right, so if I said um, if adder, and I said the text, well that gives me the text, but I also want the, the, the mask. So if this is my address, which is this element, I can go up one to go to primary and then back down to get mask. So I could say font if adder, and then find, go up one to primary, and then mask, and then I could get my text. I could do that. There's another way to do it uh, to get something that is on the same level that's called a sibling, right? I know that my adder has uh, siblings 
So I could say, for example, xpath find all my following siblings. Sibling, I never spelled this right. You can see that there's a mask sibling. You can just ask for mask. So there's a couple different ways you can navigate um, the, the element tree, you know, using these axes. And um, in the uh, tutorial guide, there is a link to, to talk about how all these axes actually work. Uh, there's a link to uh, W3Schools. So now, you know, putting this all together, uh, I have this, again, I have this list of 16 interfaces. So what I want to do is I want to go through each of those lists. So I'm going to say, you know, for interface in IF list. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the device name, which is going to be interface and then XPath, go up my ancestor, device, get the name of the device. I'm always going to get one and I want its text values. So that's going to give me the, the, the name of the device. If I want the interface name, uh, what I really want to do is my uh, interface is going to be gigabit. Again, remember, this is just going to be the gigabit. The name is one, so we really want this is called a tag. And so if we want the gigabit one to come out as, as a result, what we really want to do is say um, I have my interface and I want the tag. So that's going to be gigabit Ethernet, for example. And then if I wanted to you know, string together the, the name of it, I could say iFace. And again, I would say uh, find text name here. That would say gigabit one. You know, if I if I wanted the space between the two, I would just put a space here. But let's let's not. So that's going to give me my um, my interface name. And again, my IP address. We'll use the same thing that we did before. IP adder is going to be from this interface. Uh, find uh, find my uh, primary address. And then my uh, IP mask is going to be my IP adder. Find go up one to primary, give me my mask. And now we're going to print it all out. So we're going to say device. And then interface name has IP adder slash mask. And of course, I have to get the variable names correct. And what we really needed here was the text values because those were the elements. And that's why you see elements there. Right, okay, there you go. So this is every device that has a gigabit port, its IP address and uh, net mask. So I really showed a whole bunch of techniques there. Um, I talked about axes how to move around the XML structure, how to get the text values, and how to search for things using qualifiers. So I know this was a ton of material, but hopefully it gives you an introduction to some of the things that are possible and would uh, get you more interested to uh, reading a bit more about uh, things you can do in XPath. So again, in the readme, you'll find uh, helpful links to um, XML uh, W3Schools and uh, learn about how to do some of the things I showed you. If you have got more questions, just hit me up on Twitter or um, you know post a, a question into this repo. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have.